Okay, good evening and welcome to the studio this evening. So I am just looking at Stream Deck and some of the... On my Stream Deck I have custom icons uh, that the background basically changes. So the one that's active is red so I can see it very easily, the others aren't. Um, for some reason start never shows up and the others uh, it's almost as it only changes when I'm broadcasting not quite sure about that anyway um, more spray painting this evening with that I'm going to be using this airbrush I'm going to use that bottle uh, because it's easy well <laughs> it's not easier than using the than using the big brush but um, what it is is less back spray over spray which gets everywhere and uh, that's not good yeah that does so I'm gonna mix a bottle of this stuff up so lots of shaking again as usual I am broadcasting, I have got audio, yes I have. That's good. Yeah. So I'm going to mix this about three to one. So I'm going to put about a quarter of a bottle of this stuff in here. So about that much there and a bit of cleaning so always a it's always a good idea to try and keep the paint caps somewhat clean For some reason I'm not really succeeding with that uh, the reason oh I see it's dried paint uh, the reason being it keeps them, allows them to seal which stops the paint drying out the second is it stops paint getting actually uh, dried paint getting into your airbrush which is not good for the airbrush because it clogs the nozzle now at this point I really should have put my glove on I guess because I've now got paint all over me but never mind so now what I'll do is fill this bottle up so about that with uh, this um, thinner which is what effectively that is put this on and then put my finger over that hole and that hole which is kind of not easy to do and give it a shake Wolfie good evening welcome nice to see you lurking there in the background Good job I covered that hole up, it was coming out, which is what I expected, which is why I covered it up. So, first thing. Uh, actually, second thing. I'll do the second thing first, and then the first thing second. So, second thing first is to put a glove on. This is just a latex glove without dust. So, there's quite often when you buy these, they have, um, they have like a talc on them which is to help them not stick together and not stick to you and the thing is that gets in the way of the painting so the second thing first is the coffee right. so move the airbrush over there connect this one up so a nice little tiny quick disconnect really useful for these sorts of things because you can just switch airbrushes or anything. So am I gonna actually I'm gonna put 
just for today. The nice thing about this one is I can just decide I'm going to have the paint on the other side there, like that. So I'll just make sure that's in there. And fortunately, this is going to need some noise. I'm just thinking about whether to change my glasses or not, but we shall see. You look forward to the stream today. Why did you look forward to the stream today? Yeah, that's a bit wet. <laughs> I've got to be careful. Because I can see the, it moving. Of course, I should have done the top first, shouldn't I, before I did the bottom, but anyway. So this is actually either spraying more paint or spraying it thicker than the uh, the big airbrush. But of course the other thing about this is it's already got a coating of primer on so this second coat will actually appear to coat much faster. So I was bored of nothing to do. <laughs> Thank you very much um, for, for that uh, compliment, Wolfie. So you've done really well on the, uh, the game dev today. That's uh, fantastic news. Kind of wish my um, day had gone as, uh, as well as yours sounded to have. Unfortunately, it's been a bit of a... An awkward day, Again, trying to get software installed that didn't want to install properly and then things like that. So I'm kind of just waiting for what's going to go wrong tonight. interesting things is when you start doing things like this with primer get to the point where you can't actually tell where you've done or not and that's probably a good thing it probably means you've done enough but <laughs> is going on quite nicely tonight. And I'm not getting much overspray. I'm getting a little bit and some of it is most of it. I have to move so I'm slightly more in line with the fan um, so that it actually sucks it in. And I should actually be working closer to it as well I guess. So you may or may not be able to see see this going on, but I can certainly see it's um, it's covering up the areas, so the areas are going whiter as I'm spraying. So I'm making sure I'm getting a reasonable amount of coverage. I think two coats then, for, certainly for this particular vase, is going to be enough. Oh, 
Oh, uh, maybe not, given that I'm putting some more on here and I can see it going on. You're already at the point where you have uh, too much. <laughs> concurrency! You've got to handle concurrency now, have you? Yeah. Asynchronous programming. Where things happen in any order. That's often a challenge. Is, uh, well, I don't know if that's the cause of it in your particular game, but uh, concurrency is often a challenge. Uh, where things can happen in absolutely any order at any time. You don't know when or if they're going to happen. It's actually um, often a difficult concept for beginner programmers to do. They tend to think linearly and they can't really get on with um, things that don't happen <laughs> when they think they should happen right. a nice coating I'll just leave that there at the moment to one side and we'll uh, I'll move it off the desk shortly you've already feisty it up <laughs> now I'm sure you've uh, you, you, you have performed a learning exercise and now know how to go about doing it in a uh, more useful manner next time. Frequently when I'm programming things don't go right and uh, you have to, you know, you have to start again. Or sometimes you things go really, really well, and you find you've um, what's happened is you've kind of backed yourself into a corner in some way. So you know, you, you go, you go, um, you spend several hours programming, and then find that actually the approach you took was wrong, and you need to scrap the whole lot and start again. That can be a little frustrating. Despite what it kind of looks like, I'm not literally just blasting this paint on. <laughs> I am being somewhat careful about its application. And uh, trying to make sure I get a good even coating. <laughs> uh, it's alright. You will get to the point where you remember that sort of thing. It's, uh, it's easily enough done. Um, shall we say professional programmers do it all the time? What the, um, 
usually just go is, you know, I don't really care, I've just you know, done it again, you know? Certain things I, I forget every time until yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll run an application, it'll, it'll come up with a particular thing and, and I go, oh yeah, exactly that, yeah, I've forgotten it again. It's, it's um, what's, what's the one I typically do? Oh yeah, when I, um, if I build menus for, well, if I, build, if I build menus for office applications, I keep forgetting to alter one of the files which actually lets the, um, the application uh, know that it's got a custom menu. And if I'm doing it for access, I completely forget that I actually have to put it in a database table. Um, and I, I spend a, you know, I do it wrong. And when I uh, sort of give it to a colleague to sort of try out and he doesn't get the same menu, it's kind of, oh, of course. Because I've done it wrong again. This is probably going to lead at least another coat because it's uh, whilst it's covering, it's um, it's not going as white as as the one I've just done. So yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's not uncommon. The um, number of times uh, you uh, well, I won't say I'm a professional programmer, okay, but I do a lot of it at work. The number of times you go, there's nothing wrong with this bit of code, but it's not working uh, because it's not giving you an error code, and it just doesn't do something um, for whatever reason. And it's not telling you that reason because you're actually not telling it to do. Usually, you're not telling it to do what it is you think you're telling it to do uh, because of the bug that you've introduced. And uh, yeah, no, that's um, that's a re it's a fairly common thing, is that? Uh, I don't know if, uh, quite how RPG Maker does it, but. Um, Certainly, think uh, a lot of things um, like objects uh, in sort of the Windows applications <laughs> tends to cause that sort of thing, where the uh, they just doesn't work, uh, and it's because uh, an object is doing something that you weren't expecting. Okay, I'm not being very good at cutting that. I know this is only primer, but I shouldn't have streaks on it. <laughs> I'm actually spraying too close uh, to the work, which is why I was getting... To left, that sounds weird. Oh, well, I guess different.
<laughs> event, uh, yeah, event driven programming. Yeah, okay. I will say that kind of looks complicated. The sort of stuff um, I do um, kind of looks uh, s simple compared to that. Yeah, it's um, once you're familiar with it, you're going to look back afterwards and go, "How on earth could I not understand that?" Well, yeah. Um, When you, once, once you understand so the, the, the paradigm, the way in which it's working, you know, the, the concept behind it, um, it will become a lot easier just because you, you sort of, you'll start to understand how the application thinks. And once you've got that, then it, it will become a lot easier. Um, you also get then you start going I know I know you start so going I know this application should do this but I can't find how uh, because you know that they just would do it it's like um, Oh, a long time ago, when with Windows, oh, I forgot what it would have been, you know, early versions of Windows, just after Windows 386, um, when I started programming Windows. So uh, back then, um, you didn't get any of the fancy frameworks that are available now. You were literally working at the uh, what would be the lowest level of Windows, which is messages. And literally, everything in Windows sends messages to everything else. That's what's at the bottom of it. Um, so when you push a button, what happens is that push button sends a message. Um, and if you want to save a file, you send a message. Uh, and, and things like this. And uh, I learned how to program Windows at, at that sort of level. And, uh, and these days it's kind of like, you know, when I'm trying to do something in what would be a high level language these days, I'm going, but I know Windows can do that. You know, I know, I know what message it is, it's being sent. All you got to do is pick it up and of course the, the high level applications don't necessarily do that these days. And it, it's, it actually gets really frustrating because you know exactly what you want to do, but it just won't let you. Yeah, I know. I know. It's uh, it's that uh, uh, slap head time, you know, the, the hand to the forehead um, uh, moment. You will eventually remember. Uh, as, as you get more into it, it will start to become second nature. But uh, until then, it is yes, a, a definitely a, a source of frustration for a while. Things like that. Okay. 
Okay, so that's that one. So let's put this one on the floor to keep the, de uh, the desk tidy. I've got a, a piece of uh, this paper on the floor, so I'm keeping the... the uh, uh, I'm not getting paint on the carpet. about a third of a bottle of paint on two, um, two things, that's not bad. So this this particular um, doesn't seem to be any more paint hungry than the other, the other airbrush. Now I can see this one though, it's going to be a little bit awkward. To This one's going to need a fair few coats, I think. Daft as it sounds, it does still take a reasonable amount of skill even just to blast paint on like this because you don't want runs, for example uh, and so you still, worry, you still have to worry about uh, things like blobs on the end of uh, uh, the end of a, um, a pass which is what you'd have to uh, worry about even if I was doing if I was doing this with a, sort of a, a top coat and I was you know spraying a real colour picture perhaps I still have to worry about the same things like creating blobs on the end of the lines um, potentially there for different reasons but here because it would create runs and uh, if I create runs then it doesn't look very nice the idea is to get a smooth application of, of the paint. Well that's the idea. <laughs> uh, well my going to do well. That's not bad, you're doing well then, uh, Wolfie. It sounds like you're going to uh, end up being um, a mega streamer before long. You'll be a partner before, uh, before much more time's out now. paint is still soaking into this quite a lot so
<laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's uh, that's the look of the draw though, but that gets you, you know, the people have seen you and they will they will come back, you know? And they'll uh, they'll take another look at some other time when you when you are on and that's how it that's how it goes. Yeah, you, you uh, take all those events as, as many as you can get. This is kind of like a, a clay, uh, well, a clay um, leaf which has been stuck on. Uh, after they made the um, the vase, they then made this and stuck it on before it got fired. Imagine if you were um, a keyboard player of some kind, um, you get quite used to uh, airbrushing but I don't know if my fingers ache, even this one, I mean this one's better than the other one for doing things like this but uh, I'm continuously just pulling back on the trigger and it uh, doesn't have to make your finger ache after a while. Turn it that way now and spray lengthwise. It's a lot easier to be smoother and more consistent with the long strokes than it is to do little short ones so it's a lot better to go up and down the bars like this than to go across the neck although generally speaking if you go across the neck you're going in line with all the uh, uh, the tool marks I guess uh, from, from when it was made and you might get better coverage like that, or at least a smooth, slightly smoother coverage. Whenever you got sort of dips or ridges, there's always the ch uh, chance when you're spraying across them that you actually create a shadow effect, and you don't um, you don't spray it properly. So you've then got to come around and do it from the other direction. this um, despite being a fairly si I think I've got a 0.45 nozzle in this but it is spraying quite a small cone It's heavy.
Yeah, I am still in frame. This is one of those occasions where having an end stop um, like I've got on the Infinity which stops how much paint you can actually apply it stops you pulling it all the way back um, would be quite useful because I'm not using I'm not spraying as much as possible paint here I'm sort of uh, reducing using less of it shall we say I'm not, I'm not pulling the trigger all the way back it would kind of be nice to have an end stop which set which just stopped me from actually pulling it all the way back then I would I, I would have to concentrate less on what I'm doing you can get them for these airbrushes but uh, I actually you would use it so rarely that I haven't bothered it's only things like this where it becomes so sort of slightly uh, slightly useful to have Okay, that sounds like that's a lot. And what's, it's it's kind of good. You've got your uh, your releases uh, sorted in your own mind because that helps keep you on track. Because otherwise, it's kind of easy to uh, to get um, sidetracked into doing other things. It's a bit more comfortable to go left to right rather than up and down. Sounds good to me. And just think, a week ago you weren't sure whether you actually wanted to um, to do it or not. So much can change in just a few days. This one's going to need another coat, that's for sure. Right, let's put that over there. Ah. So you've done, a, you've done a working week, that's not bad going. Oh, that's 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 about my working week anyway. Forty hours.
king. Okay. Thus. <laughs> Spooky, isn't it, when Steam's keeping track of what you're doing? <laughs> Painting the insides of handles is always a pain. Just to get a spray inside it. So whilst, uh, whilst Wolf is out there, what I'm uh, doing here is applying primer to what are clay, clay jars and uh, the purpose of this really is, is to sort of seal the jar uh, because the clay, even fired clay, which this is, uh, will soak up paint. Um, which means if you try and paint them, which is what the intent is afterwards, uh, the paint just sort of disappears into the clay and kind of looks really sort of wishy-washy and faded. Uh, great if that's the effect you're after, I guess. Um, but I'm kind of, I kind of wanted sort of something that sort of looked, or didn't look several tens of thousands of years old. Um, so. What we do is apply the primer, this sort of seals it. And when I've got a probably what will be a couple of coats of primer at least on every uh, piece, what we'll then do is apply white paint probably as a uh, an undercoat. Um, you know, just to make them all uh, a uniform colour for painting. And then we'll we'll paint over the top something. Don't really know what yet. Um, probably something off of many of these, uh, as they resemble sort of Greek jars of, of various kinds. Probably do some form of Greek style image, whether that be sort of the doors or the Santorini blue white buildings, that sort of thing. I'm not sure. Uh, so this is kind of like prep work for that. So I'm not sure whether we'll be immediately, you know, once once these are sprayed, I'll poss possibly spray them white immediately afterwards. But whether we'll actually go on and paint them for a while, I'm not sure. So if you are interested in seeing these painted then uh, uh, push that follow button up at the top and so you get the notifications when I go live and uh, then you'll be able to uh, come back when, uh, when we get to, to painting them. And if you follow me on Twitter as well then you'll get the uh, get tweets. Uh, when I'm uh, going live and generally about what I'm going to be uh, doing on that stream. Ooh, I'm getting my armor vest. It's, it's actually hard work holding them up. They're, they're a few pounds, I don't know what, two, three pounds, four pounds, something like that. But let's not have to get your arm.
And of course we do a for those of you that don't know, we do, we do a lot of other things on this stream. It does say below the stream window that I'm a variety streamer. And it says that because that's what we do. A variety of stuff. I mean this is airbrushing, as you as might be obvious. Uh, and we're, we're painting you know, physical objects here, vases. Yes, uh, well, yesterday we were doing this. Day before we were doing monochrome airbrushing. Uh, you know, white paint on black uh, uh, black paper. Uh, before that, um, I can't remember what I did before that. But we, on this stream, we've done things like carving and engraving chain mail, uh, bead weaving, uh, rug making and uh, uh, pyrography, that's wood burning if you prefer that term, which I don't, but yeah, what the heck. And uh, what else have we done? Uh, carving, have I mentioned carving? Um, scraper board. Um, so a fair number of things. I'm sure I've missed something off there, that list as well. So if you want to, um, if you want to take a look at some of the very early streams that I've done, which has got some carving in it, for example, and I mean early, like uh, in the first few months of me uh, starting streaming, then if you take a look at uh, YouTube and the links on the right hand side in in you know in that the blue box, then uh, I've started uploading the really early streams. From, the, from my archive of recordings and they're going up there so if you want to see some of the early things like carvings of Ruth the dragon for example then uh, that's a good place to check out um, let's put this out of the way and I mentioned chain mail there that's, that's jewel making jewellery so if, um, if for example you're interested in uh, chain mail jewellery then the um, that is the stuff that has been made on. Okay, stuff that I was about to say. The, the things that I've made on stream can be made for you as well, if you would like to buy them. And uh, that's what the Etsy shop is at the moment. It's got uh, chain mail mainly, or some some other bead jewelry available for sale. They're all made for order, so you might. Uh, that sort of thing interests you at all, either for yourself or as presents, then um, now check out Etsy, saraganart.etsy.com, again that's down in the bottom blue box, and I'm sure um, there may be one or two uh, fellas watching that kind of go, well I'm not interested in jewellery, well, fair enough. You may know somebody that is, or perhaps you might prefer some stainless steel jewellery. Um, I don't have it to hand, but I ha do have, this is aluminium but and, and sterling silver, but stainless steel, it's heavy, it's bigger than this, it's thicker. It's nice, uh, some nice jewellery for that, so you know, that might be of interest to you. And it all goes towards supporting the uh, the stream to the proceeds of uh, of those sales. Uh, or if you just like to uh, support the stream full stop, um, then uh, up at the top right there is the uh, subscribe button. I think at the moment until TwitchCon the. Uh, 
they're half price, aren't they? I believe are subscriptions. And uh, subscriptions uh, go uh, also go towards helping uh, the stream, buying materials and things like that. So, if you'd like to uh, consider helping the stream, that would be fantastic. Of course, you don't have to. There's no problem. You can still watch. You're not being um, banned or anything. <laughs> they're going to have to mix some more paint but that's okay uh, I'm actually using less than I was expecting which is uh, interesting uh, probably because this is atomizing it more than the uh, the big airbrush I was using it's not coating as fast but uh, I'm using less paint so I guess there's a trade-off there somewhere If you are watching by the way, you're interested in any of those crafts that I mentioned, want to ask any questions, feel free to do so. I don't mind answering questions, that's not, uh, not an issue. So what sort of things did I mention? Uh, in case you can't remember, well, let's see if I can. Because uh, actually there's, there's, there's a few and I tend to forget them. So there's jewellery making which is uh, chain mail, uh, kumahimo braiding and uh, bead weaving um, which is, uh, is one of them. There's carving, that's wood carving with chisels, that's um, hand chisels so they're really really sharp and now I don't cut myself and we do relief carving which is a particular style of carving and there's pyrography also known as wood burning although um, we don't burn any wood at all uh, but uh, that's uh, a craft that is done uh, punch craft punch craft is a is a it's a method of creating I would probably describe them as miniature rugs uh, because they're kind of they are made like rugs are made it's using the same sort of technique that rugs are made uh, punching a, a, a needle through material uh, creating a loop of thread or wool in this particular case uh, to, uh, to create a pattern uh, in the uh, in the rug, uh, well, I make small rugs if you like, 12-inch diameter type rugs, and um, they are uh, generally uh, an image of some kind. So I think you may see some come up on the picture roll uh, in on the right-hand side there. It's jewellery at the moment. But if you see a couple of woolly looking railway engines, a red one and a blue one, that's Punchcraft. So uh, another one is Scraperboard. And Scraperboard is, 
a board that you scrape, <laughs> surprisingly. But what that, is, what that is, is it's a black looking board. And if you scratch it, it, it reveals a white underneath. And so you can create images by scratching the black off the top, uh, leaving white. And how you do that, the techniques that you use, and size, dimension, quantity of um, scratches, etc., all go towards making whatever image it is that you want to portray. Now, I can't remember if I've mentioned everything there. But uh, that's uh, a start. I think I've also may actually done something called latch hook ropes. Yes, I have on, on stream as well. So that's actually making large picture rugs. And by large, I mean sort of like about three or four feet across. Uh, using a different technique to, uh, to the punch craft in this particular case. Um, so latch hooking is about taking small lengths of wool and actually tying knots in them into the carpet or to the rug. I've also done glass engraving on stream, made uh, a few things. I think the last last couple of things were upcycled coffee jars, one of which became a TARDIS, the other one became sort of an aquarium, and glass engraved. That's, um, that's something else which has been done. So a fair number of things, uh, you know, that's, I think that constitutes variety. going to have enough paint left to finish this particular vase I wonder. Because Murphy says I'm going to have be, you know one stroke short of the uh, the full vase. It'll, it'll uh, need another coat anyway so. Yeah. <laughs> One stroke short of the full vase. <laughs> it would be, wouldn't it? Uh, I'm out of paint, so I need to mix some more now. So let's just take that off of that, so I don't drip paint. Get the airbrush out of the way. Whew. It's a little bit warm in here. Yeah, so it's just. Clean that tube, not for any reason that it needs cleaning, but I don't want to put it down and get paint all over the place. So, primer, also known as sealer because it seals. In fact, I should give it another shake. I could do this out of the camera shot and then you can make up your own jokes if you like. second time we're doing this it gets a little bit harder to see uh, just where um, the paint is in the bottle but that's about enough I think we'll fill the rest up with uh, with a thinner good mix and that's got thinner all over this piece of and all of my fingers but that's fine it's kind of a water-based so it's not uh, 
not too bad I say kind of water based because there's a little bit of alcohol in it and now I give it a good shake mix it up so what I'm basically doing is, is thinning it down it makes it easier to uh, to spray basically that should be enough right the other thing with this is if I get hold of a vase now until that dries off I'm going to be um, potentially uh, sort of wiping off some of the paint because it will re-thin it. So it's the big one next, this big boy. I think actually we'll take this one off of the table as well. Thank you very much, uh, Incredible Wolfie. Uh, but uh, well, Stream Deck's saying three at the moment, so it's um, what's uh, what's Twitch saying? Uh, Twitch is saying uh, two stroke three. And uh, good evening to the other viewer that's there as well. Um, seen you here before I'll not mention your name you're quite welcome to say hello if you want but uh, thank you for dropping in again well the next time you get a thousand plus viewers um, Wolfie what you, uh, you know, feel free to mention the stream you know Part of the problem is possibly because I tend to keep doing different things. I don't keep doing the same thing all the time. Which does sort of... Um, you know, if people don't like airbrushing, for example, then... You know, they... Um, they don't stay very long. Or if they prefer pyrography and I don't do that for another few weeks, then... Uh, It becomes, uh, yeah, it's a little bit difficult. I probably should stick to at least. Uh, one of the nice things about this is I can tilt the airbrush like that and just move the um, the paint cup down, and I can get into sort of more awkward places. Yeah, maybe uh, I should perhaps keep doing the same thing for uh, for quite a while, you know, rather than being quite so much of a A variety because unfortunately it doesn't kind of translate to games you know it's I know um, a lot of game players for example will play multiple games but uh, it's not quite the same as multiple crafting Oh, I think it's part of the fun of the stream as well. I mean, I um, I enjoy doing lots of different things. I I kind of get bored with doing the same thing. It does mean I'm not as good at any one thing as I would be if I sort of just did that exclusively, you know. But um, and uh, yeah, but you know, when you do get a thousand viewers, um, well, free, just yeah, feel free to mention it. <laughs> Twenty-three is quite a large number for quite a few of the uh, creative broadcasters. I don't think I don't think since I restarted streaming, I've um, had that many in a stream. So. I think we used to get sort of. Uh, started to get that sort of number when uh, you know a year or so ago, but yeah, that's uh, I had to stop back then, and that's kind of it. So.
Of course, um, I'm going to say Incredible Wolf Fever. Uh, as somebody who uh, does regularly watch the stream, um, you're quite welcome to say if you prefer to see something else, any particular, you know, like what I might do next in terms of crafts. If there's um, one of the things that I do that you might prefer to see, I won't guarantee that I'll do it, but I will take it into consideration. As I would do for any of the viewers, to be honest, if some people, yeah, would like to see something that I've not done for a while. Let's see if I can get in there. One situation where a paintbrush beats an airbrush is getting to those spaces like inside there. Oh and of course I saved the, the, um, the heaviest vase to last in there. You know, my arms are getting tired from holding these things up and I've saved the heaviest to last. That's probably a clever move. He says And so and this is actually taking me longer than thought it was. It's always, I think it's always surprising that how long things take to do. I mean, you might think sort of spraying, you know, these six vases wouldn't take very long, and I probably would think the same thing. And yet, one cut on each of them has taken now what almost an hour and fifteen, something like that. It really is surprise, you know, surprising just how long things people t uh, things pe ah how long things take. What I was trying to say is, and, and people often underestimate the um, the time. Why often people think that handmade items are expensive because they don't actually realise just how much time goes into making um, making things because it doesn't feel like it ought to take very long you know uh, you know just undercoating a vase to 20 minutes so uh, a chain mail bracelet which is an hour or you know, an hour and a half and uh, you know it's, it's only seven inches long and yeah it takes that long to make. Right. That would be nice, thank you very much, uh, Wolfie. And as uh, as you know, as I probably said, you know, um, there's, if you think of what's in the store as um, examples, you know, there's. there's I think 16 different colours in, in the aluminium and uh, various colours in the niobium and titanium and the you know, stainless steel, just about anything can, uh, that's done can be done in, in any of the 
sort of colours and metals. Not always, but sort of quite often. And things like the the, the beads and the um, uh, crystals and things like that are also sort of different colours available. So. Of course, as soon as you launch your game, you're going to be rolling in the cash, so you won't have a problem then. Yep, to your wish. That's right. <laughs> battery That's a bit wet. My arm's got to that stage where it's burning and I'm kind of uh, uh, starting to look forward to putting this down. Of course, there's absolutely no reason why I can't put it down. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not super critical that I hold on to it. I can have a rest and things like that, but I'm just kind of looking forward to uh, completing it and then I can have a bit of a longer rest and finish off my coffee oh 
still got about a third of this to do, blimey. What I ought to do is get a fan actually and put it underneath the desk here and run the fan. That would keep me a bit cooler because it, it, it is getting quite warm and it's probably just the effort of holding this that's doing that but... There we go, right. Let's see what it says. What are you what chat's been up to? Uh, okay. Oh JavaScript, eh? I'm taking the, it, it uh, the, this is what the um, the game engine is written for you based on what you've uh, you've put in. There's a lot of there's a lot of comments. I can sort of read it. I mean, I can, I, I can, I can physically, I can read it. Now, as to what it's actually doing, uh, create window, create battler, status windows, command windows, gold windows, HP windows. You've got a lot of windows. Um, I'm <laughs> glad to say you've got you've got so many windows there. You've probably got almost a greenhouse. a lot of JavaScript. I mean these days JavaScript is kind of like C sharp, it's kind of like a lot of other things. Um, and uh, but I've not done a lot of JavaScript. I have done I have done some. And uh, it's I'm probably going to end up doing some more in the next uh, couple of couple of three weeks. Um, but most of mine is data manipulation, not uh, not necessarily graphical work like that. Yeah. But, uh, it's cheating though if you're using a, um, I was going to say 4GL, using a, 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 um, your uh, your game engine's writing the JavaScript for you. So you kind of. Um, not exactly written it. <laughs> Very said which it's kind of uh, it's kind of like what I was doing about a week ago. I was using what was I using? Uh, I can't remember the language I was using. Probably a, sort of some uh, some variant of Visual Basic for, uh, for um, 
another another tool that we use and I was writing using it to write SQL scripts which which actually then wrote something else in the database so that was quite a convoluted sort of um, thing um, so you use a language to write a language to write yeah use a language to write a language which was writing a language to do something <laughs> trying to keep that straight in your own mind is quite difficult as well so that's not bad, that's covered quite well. I've got some paint left, I've got half a tub of paint left. So I'm going to give some more coats to things. I might as well use up the paint. There's no point in pouring it away. So uh, this probably this should have had enough time to dry to to uh, to cure. So this this forms a, a third layer rather than just merging into the second. But this one looks like it will be um, once it's dried off properly, um, be ready to uh, to actually undercoat with white as a base for a painting. And for some reason this is making me feel hungry so I think uh, after this stream I'm going to be having something to eat and I've got a choice. I can either have popcorn or I can have rhubarb and strawberry crumble. And I'm not actually sure which I want. <laughs> How's that for a choice? Popcorn or rhubarb and strawberry crumble. I quite like, well I do like popcorn. Um, I like making popcorn as well. I just wish I could um, get some of the sorts of stuff they put on crisps and things like that so that I could make flavoured popcorn. So I'd make the popcorn and then sort of dust it with sort of like salt and vinegar or beef flavouring, all that sort of thing. So I could actually have flavoured popcorn. On top of the butter taste of course. Because normally I just have uh, it seasoned with salt. Which surprisingly is quite nice. Oh I find it quite nice. Of course anybody else may not but it's me that's eating it. Popcorn. Oh, same. Um, what the what it is is it's um, it's it's cooked rhubarb. So it's it's been boiled for a while with, with strawberries, I guess, because I've never actually had it with strawberries before. So they've they've sort of been cooked, so they go soft, and then it's put in like a a a, 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 a pie. What would be a pie dish? And it's then covered with like a, bis a biscuit, uh, if you take a biscuit and crumble it up, it's a bit like that on top. Uh, and then it's baked, so it goes all crispy. And it's, it's a bit more complicated than that, I gather, but we buy it from the shop ready made and then we just warm it up. Um, but it's, uh, generally speaking, they're quite nice. You know, the apple, do that sort of thing with apples as well, because apples. Um, I suppose you do it with, with quite a lot of fruit um, that will sort of go soft when it's cooked. But yeah, might be right with the popcorn. The thing I like about, one of the things I like about popcorn is um, you kind of can, can very easily, I mean you get a small, I don't know, um, Trying to find something, but I don't know. So, 
something about sort of three or four of let's say two three or four of these size full of popcorn kernels um, and it makes a ginormous bowl that takes you about an hour to eat um, and it's got about 10 calories in it <laughs> and uh, so it's kind of uh, well, that's kind of one of the nice things I like about it it just takes so long to eat it's not like a, a chocolate bar for example which is gone in about 10 you know 10 seconds you just can't eat popcorn that fast even if you want it to <laughs> well, I think chocolate over here in the UK is different to what you're probably used to, uh, uh, Wolfie, because um, it's a lot milder. Um, you know, we English-wise, we have a kind of like a lot of um, a lot of milk in it. It's not. It's not particularly bitter. I think there's quite often a lot of, or uh, has in the past been a lot of controversy, shall we say, because uh, Europe has a different uh, idea of what chocolate is to the UK. Same with ice cream as well. You like pure, ch you like pure chocolate. Wow. Pure. Well, I've never, I've never had pure chocolate, but uh, I've had some that are, shall we say, getting there, uh, and and they are, qu they've got quite a long way to go, and it, I find it extremely bitter. I um, um, I say I've got some. I do have some continental chocolate down here and uh, it, it's really dark and I yeah, it's it's too bitter for me I know some people love it but um, unfortunately I'm not one of them I was just thinking, and the other thing I kind of like to eat with, you know, like uh, popcorn, I eat as like a snack if you like. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't eat biscuits or chocolate very often. Um, I am so sort of a lot more partial. Actually, I'm, I'm a lot more partial to having raw cauliflower or raw broccoli uh, rather than uh, rather than chocolate. I'd rather have cauliflower, um, but I quite often like. Um, Roasted, salted and roasted pistachio nuts as well. That's another uh, another one of my sort of favourite snacks. Unfortunately, just a bit more expensive than the popcorn, but. Uh I quite like um, raw vegetables and eating eating raw vegetables. Uh, my snacks tend to be sort of quite healthy in that respect. Yeah, that one looks like it, it's uh, going to be 
ready to uh, undercoat next time when it's, it's been dried off. <laughs> one small change, one large effect. The fun comes when you change something when you're programming that does things like hides all the windows including the one that you need to get to to unhide all the windows and because um, I, I did that not so long ago and uh, not only that at the point where I kind of hit them all they saved their state so when you started the application again they came up with their existing state which was kind of all hidden and it, it took I had to write an application to modify the status of all of these windows in their save status in order to make them visible again and that was an interesting sort of challenge I've had a, a number of my colleagues who have written written programs and they um, kind of forget the way Windows works and that is if they've um, um, I, I, I'm, I'm quite lucky work-wise I use three monitors and, and other people sometimes use two but everybody um, sort of arranges them uh, not everybody but a lot of people arrange them slightly differently one of the things you've got to remember with um, uh, a lot of windows is they always reopen where you close them and when somebody's sort of written a program um, and they forget that and then um, they've opened it at the top left of their screen setup and when uh, when somebody else opens it up on their computer that top left is actually a long way off the left of their screen and they just can't get to it and then um, I quite often get calls of, how do you bring a window back on screen again you just removed all your plugins <laughs> So it attempts you to load all the stuff that you had in plugins and went ah, I see yeah that does tend to break things remove all the add-ins that you've used and uh, yeah. Quite an, uh, you can probably hear um, as I as I go over the end of this, I'm, I'm blowing air past the hole in the bottom of the jar, and it, it, you can hear the jar resonating. But I can actually feel it as well on my hand. It's uh, it's quite an odd sort of feeling.
wanted to use a simple plugin where it looked up at players cooler. Oh, colour. Okay. Hmm. Okay, you. Yeah. Well, I've got some. I guess I was going to say, can you not just reinstall them all and then um, hey presto everything will work again? Um, otherwise, um, I guess you've just learnt the um, the value of backups and um, incremental storage. It's what things like GitHub uh, do for you, or um, similar similar other applications. That you make modifications um, to make those changes then you can always roll back if you break something. That's of course assuming you don't completely uh, mess up your uh, development environment. Now if you were able to see this quite closely you'd kind of notice that this surface is sort of quite rough. It's almost uh, hairy looking shall we say. Um, and I guess, well, maybe not for, for vases but we, if I was doing it, it, what's happening is a little bit is that the, uh, the paint is um, Raising the surface texture a little bit, I'm certainly making it more obvious. Uh, but just the uh, same thing tends to happen with wood as well. But uh, with wood, what I'd probably do at this point is sand it down. But I'm not going to do that with a vase. You kind of expect a vase to be not, you know, a, a clay vase not to be perfectly smooth. Okay, I won't worry and see you when you get back. You can also use um, the air that's coming out of the airbrush to dry the paint as well like this. I'm just blowing air now. There's no paint. And it's um, it's quite a, it's quite a useful thing sometimes to just surface dry the paint. Which is all I've done there. It's not cured, it'll come off fairly easily, but it just surface dried it, which can be uh, quite useful at times. I'll use this one. I'm just trying to decide then whether to do this or to do the slightly larger one. But I'll do this one. I don't think I have enough paint left to do the um, slightly larger one with the leaf motif on the side. 
I'm not even sure I'll have enough paint to do this, but we'll see how far we get. Has anybody just joined the stream wonders what on earth is going on? Uh, I am applying, um, using an airbrush in this particular case, to apply a primer coat to uh, these clay vases. The intent is, once this is um, dried, to apply white paint and then to paint on them. As to what I'm going to paint, I don't know yet. user interface design eh? the extremely important part about any application One useful thing about a jug with a handle when you're painting it like this is um, at least the handle lets you know when you've gone all the way around.
Other than that, it's, it's quite an awkward thing to paint, but... Um, Because as you put more paint on and you start to, uh, you, you lose the sort of the, um, the, the clay look from it because you've got the, the you, you're coating the surface properly shall we say and, and you know fully um, then uh, you kind of need something to help you know when you've been all the way around the vase. That will be a good thing, uh, Wolfie. If you can make your game look like it's not uh, something that's built with that sort of you know, cookie cutter, um, as it's described as, you know, game engines where everybody's game looks the same because it's been done with the same engine, then um, you know, you make your game stand out then, and it's not. It's not just that, oh, it's another one built with that, uh, as, uh, as people sometimes go. Because then they get an expectation of what, you know, what it's going to be like because it was built with a particular engine. Uh, that's gone a bit further than I thought. Okay, so we will do a bit more on this. I'll use up the paint on this uh, this one, I think. This will need yeah one or, at least one or two more coats, I think, before it's. Uh, Good enough. And of course, I saved the heavy one for last again. The um, what one of the things I'd be inclined to just take a look at for uh, would be um, with, with that is is the menu items you've got there, not the items but the the font because. Um, Because that will make it look more individualistic as well. Um, especially if you could get a font that's kind of in the style of the scenery that you're um, portraying.
って思う気がない<笑>いやあ、いかいかいどえびてんがおわんす See how far what's left this paint goes. second. Is that pain exhausted? Just about. Can't get any more out of it. No. Okay. 
Well, that's another one that's going to need some more coating later. Oh dear. Let's get rid of that glove. Ah oh dear. <laughs> yeah, working progress, I think. Yes. That's true, it's starting to get a bit late for you, isn't it, Wolfie? It's not actually that particularly early for me as well, but uh, I've actually gone on a bit longer than I intended to, but then again, um, I, I don't like wasting paint, <laughs> so I'm going to use that out. I've used up that paint, I'll clean the airbrush out in a minute. That's relatively easy to do with that one. Um, I just blast lots and lots of water through it uh, and then take the needle out and give it a clean because no matter how much water you blast through the needle always retains paint and I don't want it to dry on there so it's not, a, not too bad a, a, an airbrush to clean now um, heading towards 11 there yeah it's uh, well it's I guess you you what one and a half hours ahead I thought you were two um, to be honest uh, one, two, yeah, I thought you were two, we should be 20 past, no, uh, one hour, be 20 past 10, you're about an hour ahead, aren't you? Um, yeah, it's not long before the clocks go back here in the UK, so it would be an hour earlier still, and uh, otherwise than that, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Time zones, confusing things. It's only just recently I actually realised that um, in India, a lot of uh, time zones are usually an hour difference. So, like UK and France are an hour apart, and, and I guess that where you are, uh, uh, Wolfie, there in the Netherlands, I think is an hour apart, isn't it? Um, but when you get to India, it's kind of like an hour and a half in some places, which is something I only realised just recently. Um, which was interesting to say the least half an hour difference yeah you kind of get used to it you know the hour difference and then when it's half an hour somebody says it's sort of you know they'll be saying like now it's sort of five to five to two in the morning or something yeah, five to two when you look at the clock it's confusing anyway um that's it for tonight it's, it's gone on a bit longer but I've done a little bit more and, and uh, there's at least two more this is this um, hasn't been had a complete second cut it's going to need some more the big vase um, or the big jug needs at least another coat on it some of these might need a bit more I'm not sure uh, but we'll have a look at them once they've uh, cured tomorrow so there's probably another uh, day of putting primer on may then get to um, doing some of the white I've got a white out already here and uh, so that that'll be a, a, a brilliant white so I know this looks white but when I spray brilliant white it'll look even whiter and that'll then act as the canvas against which we put the um, whatever we put on, on on these things I mean this thing this thing here is either going to be green or it's got to be nice shades of you know, different shades of brown and gold I think I'm not quite sure other than that <laughs> um, so uh, about that time of night for the usual advert which is to remind people of that the stuff in the blue box down there Zergan Art is my own website it's got a little bit more information about some of the crafts like the pyrography and the, uh, the some of the images that have been done on stream like Salute to Sunset for example it tells you a little bit more about uh, about that particular image and there is uh, YouTube there where all the old archive is gradually being uploaded currently uh, it's it's Ruth the Dragon the carving of Ruth the Dragon which I didn't actually realize is started two years ago and uh, only finished it earlier this year uh, but with a year's break in the middle 
So if you want to see some of Ruth the Dragon being carved, that's uh, that's gradually going up onto YouTube. There is of course the usual Twitter and Facebook there. Comment, rate and subscribe. Um, Twitter, in case you would be concerned about following me, is generally about the stream and art that's done on the stream. So it's not a, it's not a very prolific, that's a hard word to say, uh, timeline uh, timeline of events coming in um, so I'm a relatively safe tweeter to follow and of course there's Etsy which is the shop for all the jewellery the sort of stuff you're seeing on the right hand side most of it that's that's the sort of stuff which in fact it's, those are the pictures of stuff which is available in the in the shop there's so going out at Etsy.com take a look I think they're going to make. Uh, I think they'd make fantastic Christmas presents of, of uh, either yourself or other people. And uh, get in early because it can take a little while to make them. They're all handmade uh, to order, and you don't want to be caught in Christmas rush or Christmas postage. And of course, I'm going to point out the two, two. They're up there. Um, they are up there. Yeah, because I've seen them on other streams. Can't see them on my stream because. I'm subscribed uh, and I'm following myself automatically Twitch do that sort of thing for you but uh, follow the stream if you'd like to uh, be notified come back see us again see us on your favorites list and on the front following list then you'll know when I'm live and what I'm doing and of course if you consider following uh, not following actually even following but uh, subscribing to the uh, stream uh, the proceeds of which come going to materials and things like that for the stream and allow us to keep going doing lots of different things so if you would consider that that'd be fantastic that's it for tonight look out for me tomorrow between 1900 hours and 2000 hours uh, British summer time I will be starting somewhere within that time window I'll generally go for approximately two hours then uh, until nine or, or afterwards when we run out of paint for example and uh, We'll do some more of this. Again, thanks for watching. See you on the next stream. Bye for now.